right, and we are back working on the red wagon. And uh, so far, I got the uh, bracket for the alternator, and I found the upper radiator hose. Um, I think I need some hose clamps though, which I don't have. This came in the mail today, so we're gonna replace the terminals because they're in bad shape. I'm not sure what to do about this. I don't know how that even really connects. Um, but we'll figure it out. I know this is for the uh, the automatic seat belts. And then obviously we need to remount this. I've got some slim fans that I think I'm gonna pull this back out and put the slim fans on. And we need to get the lower the lower timing belt cover on. We have it right here. We've got all our screws and the piece that goes on the cam or the crank gear. I also bought one of these kits. It was pretty cheap. It's probably cheap, but it should work and it's a lot better than the system I have been using which is nothing so anyway let's get this timing belt cover on I'm really starting to question whether this is the right timing belt cover you know what we're gonna leave it off and just go ahead and get the crank on there because I don't think that's the right one plus I don't have the gasket for it anyway we have the wood roof key for the crank one thing you never want to lose so you see these little grooves in here these are for the the timing when you do the distributor timing I'm going to recolor them that way I can see them because as they are now you can't hardly see them get that paint down into the grooves and then you sand off the top that way the only paint left is just in the grooves let's go ahead and pull this radiator out It was a pain in the ass to get in there. This bottom radiator hose is being a bitch. Let's get this off of here. All right, so I got my slim fan here and I'm gonna take the plug from this one and put it on this one just because I want the same plug and I've got zip ties to hold it in
We got it done. We got it uh, zip tied in there. We got the plug, the OEM plug soldered on. All right, we need to get the uh, lower radiator hose on. We should be able to get it. All right. Let's get the uh, upper hose on there. This hose right here, the uh, the U hose, or I don't know what you call it. All right, this looks to be dry now, so. Hopefully I'll be able to see that now. Just found a hose clamp that's broke. That kind of sucks. And I don't have any more. Well, I need hose clamps before I go any further with the cooling system, but I'm gonna go ahead and check this thing out. I think it was like 12 bucks or some shit. 13, $12.99. Looks like they need, need to shave this down. All right, we got it in there. Works pretty good. All right, so let's do the uh, battery terminals. Um, the ground wire isn't very long, so I'm gonna have some trouble with that. 
and I'm not sure how this works how all this connects so we're gonna have to figure that out I might have to do like an inline fuse um, I'm not sure let's get it unscrewed should have done this before I put the radiator in So we're going to remove the ground wire. It, it mounts to the body and then over to the transmission, like right down here. It's like the tiniest screw ever. I'm gonna go see if I can pull one off of the CRV behind me. All right, the one on the CRV is not very long, so Jesus, Jake, break. Anyway, the one on the CRV is not very long, so it wouldn't help me out very much. But uh, let's try to get this apart. Perfect. All right, we got the uh, negative battery. Now let's work on the positive. We're gonna disconnect the whole harness. It goes from the fuse box and then the other one goes to the starter. And that boot that was on the starter is just completely disintegrated. All right, we got these two off and we need to figure out what this is what's going on with this all right I see it just connects through power right here I think I'm gonna just put some inline fuses into it let's go over here and take a look at this that right here all right so this piece plugs into here this direction and so I'm a I'm assuming there's a 30 amp fuse for each each one of these wires so I think what I would do is put a inline fuse on both sides to eliminate this whole thing and then put like these little o-ring clamp things on each one of these wires i think that's a plan but i don't have all the parts i need so but we can get started and then obviously this piece i'm gonna cut off and replace 
All right, since I don't have the fuse holders, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this piece. These probably aren't the best battery terminals, but they were cheap and so I just bought them. I, I, I might replace them with something better. Might as well retape them while I got it apart. All right, we got that on there. Um, I think with those those I whatever those round clamp things that are going for the the seat belt. Ideally, I'd like to stick them on here. Um, I might just do that, but I could just stick them on here too. Let's see if I can go find another boot for this uh, starter. All right, I found this one, and it's not all still flexible. But the problem is, will I be able to get it in there? All right, we got it cut off. Let's see if it'll slide in there. I want to get it up over this. I mean, what is this? Let's take that off. Well, that's part of the old boot. <laughs> All right, I see. Sweet. Now we can tape this up. God damn, look at that. That whole plastic is just tore up. Jesus, it's just breaking everywhere. Let's just tape it all up. How about that? One day when I do a wiring tuck, um, I'll probably have to redo all this. But that day is not today. So let's just uh, tape it up and hopefully it works out. All right, let's screw that down. There you go. Now you can see. All right, there we go. That'll reach the top of the battery. And just need to get the inline fuse holders for this. And we should be good. All right, well, that's gonna be the end of this video. We didn't get a whole lot done, but you know, uh, a little bit of progress is better than no progress at all. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.